Hi guys! In today's lesson, we are covering shadows and highlights on miniatures and how you can achieve this with a simple technique called zenithal priming. Zenithal priming is using a darker base color, like this, and then spraying a lighter color over that to simulate the light hitting the model, like this. I normally achieve this with cans of spray primer, as I just showed you, um, or an airbrush. Uh, I will demonstrate how to establish a typical overhead light source, um, like the sun, that can be applied to miniatures, and also how different light sources can affect the mood or emotion of the miniature, as well as create an atmosphere. Before I show you some examples with the miniatures here, I want to talk a little about light source on a miniature and some useful things to keep in mind when establishing light and shadow. There are different types of light sources and as a painter, the best way to study how different light affects objects around you is to simply study your natural environment. If there is a certain lighting technique you'd like to use on your miniature, look up various images and have resources that are helpful guides when you are painting. The best way to get better at something is to practice, and determining lights and shadows on a miniature is no different. It is just another skill you need to employ to push your painting and always get better, just like color, composition, and technique for applying paint. Here's an illustration on a light source hitting an object. I could talk all day about the science behind lighting and how the eye perceives an object, but today I want everyone to think about general lighting and have some fun with creating highlights with a can of white primer. Now, let's talk in more minis. We'll take you to our outdoor priming representative, Aaron Lovejoy. All right, guys, we've, uh, we've moved our operation out to the Great American Outdoors, AKA my backyard. Um, we're gonna be doing some priming with some uh, standard rattle cans. Um, I use the Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch 2X. Uh, it gives extra coverage. Um, this stuff's around $3 a can. Get it at Home Depot. Um, Depending on your area, the primers will work differently. This one seems to work pretty good in Southern California, so that's what I use. I like it because it covers very quickly. Um, the 2X stands for double black, so um, just with a couple sprays, it will cover very nicely. Um, for white, I use the Duplicolor Sandable Primer. Make sure it's Sandable Primer. Um, this stuff works really well. Um, the black works well as well. Um, the only drawback to it is it doesn't cover very good, so you're going to end up spraying lots and lots of coats, which means your paint runs out a lot quicker. Um, but for the white, it works great. Now, when shaking them, I usually just give them a shake like that, spin them around, switch it around, spin it this way. You want the ball that's inside of it to, to really mix the paint up well. So we're going to do this for a couple minutes with each can. I'm not going to make you watch, but uh, we'll come back with the actual priming. All right, so oftentimes you'll have small pieces of uh, bottles that are too small and they will actually fly away when you prime them. You can also do this when you're airbrushing, but I'm just taking some painter's tape masking tape and I'm making a strip on my platform here. This is just a tabletop that I got from Home Depot. Let's get those pieces out and we just stick them onto the tape Usually I start with the bottom side up because usually what happens is when you flip it over it takes a little bit of the paint off. Um, so I like spraying the top side last so it's perfect. You can also put the other pieces down that you want to spray. Here we go. So I'll spray, get it going. And then you want to be about 12 inches away 
and you want to spray in nice even sprays. And we're going to spray all the way around the model. So, see that? Nothing's flying away. See how quickly that black builds up? You want to be careful if it's really cold or really hot, it will have adverse reactions to your spray primer. So if your temperatures or humidity is extreme, maybe switch to priming by an airbrush. Um, when I'm spraying armies, I usually do I usually do the rattle can because it just is so much quicker than airbrushing it. A lot of times I'll do the the black and then I'll come back for the zenithal highlight. I'll do that with a with the prime, with the airbrush because it's fairly quick. But I will actually show you how to do the zenithal prime with another can of paint. All right, so that's all that. I'm actually gonna spray this too. That's our model that we're gonna do zenithal prime. You can get down low, spray, like a boss. I like to take my time when I'm priming, make sure every surface is covered. Whatever you do, don't hold your primer like this and make a big mess, because that's no bueno. You wanna, you wanna go sweeping motions. You don't want to be too far away either because what happens is the paint dries in the air and then it will actually create a uh, rough texture on the model. So don't do that. All right, we'll be right back with the other side and then we'll do our zenithal. All right, to do the zenithal lighting on this, you just want to do um, light sprays over at a top 45 degree angle. Um, you're not going to get as much uh, control as with the airbrush, but you can still get get a good light to dark ratio. Alright, so that's how you do the Zenithal Prime using just spray can primer. Make sure you use flat colors. Um, Elizabeth, are you ready for that West Coast East Coast transfer? Here we go. Thanks Aaron! Now that everyone has an idea on how to prime, I'm going to show you a few examples with the miniatures I have here. Thanks to Bombshell Miniatures for the really cool babes, these, and uh, I'm using some Kingdom Death models uh, to show you guys some brief examples of how I start painting with object source lighting. So you can see that I have the bare metal miniatures here. I'm going to take each one and do a different type of light source on them to show you guys the effect of um, different angles and uh, different positions of where your light source would be. Um, so I've got my bombshell babes here and I'll come back with each one and show you what each one looks like. All right, now we're back after I've primed and I wanna show you guys the examples of um, what I did with zenithal priming with the white primer as my light source. Now keep in mind that it isn't as precise as say an airbrush and we'll cover that in another video but we wanted to show everyone what they could do with $3 bottles of primer. I'll show you guys some neat effects. So with this girl, I kind of wanted to concentrate my light source to be in here with this box. And I simply um, held the spray can from down here. I'll go through my finger. From down here, and I sprayed upwards so to simulate the uh, lighting that would be coming out of say the box and hitting her from this way. So that's a neat way to give you guys an idea of um, a light source on your miniature. For this guy, I wanted to concentrate my light source on his back where all his lanterns are. 
So I simply sprayed from this angle and then I took it and went from this angle a little bit and from this angle here and I made sure to get some of his face because faces are the most important parts of miniatures usually and the, the eye is naturally drawn to the face. So you can see that I just concentrated a lot of my lighting on his back, which will make for a neat miniature. All right. Uh, with this one, I kind of had the idea that she might have been looking at the sunset standing on a cliff so I used my can of spray primer and I went from this direction. So I simply held the miniature and pointed the, the spray can to hit her here. And um, again, be careful on the amount of um, primer you're using because it comes out really fast so you can overdo it. And if you overdo it, just spray prime, prime it black a little bit again and redo uh, your zenithal priming. Um, so there's another idea. Um, for this one, I wanted the angle of the light to be here. So I simply, you guys are probably getting the idea, I took the spray can and I sprayed this way and it kind of directs the viewer, the light will direct the viewer to whatever she's pointing at. So that's a good way to get an idea for that one. All right, for these, um, these are some of my Kingdom Death miniatures, and uh, as you guys know, uh, a lot of these have lanterns or they have sources of light, um, especially the starting survivors. So a lot of times, um, this is how I set up my object source lighting to give myself an idea of where the light, where I might want the light to go. Um, it also helps the white um, primer uh, makes the colors brighter, as we covered in that first video I did on color. So when you're painting, your colors will be more vibrant here as opposed to where it's dark. So you can see that I took the primer and I simply sprayed this way. And then I came around and just got a little bit on the edge here so I could get her whole lantern to be um, white. And then I've got this one, my last survivor here. Um, I did the same thing but I thought maybe I'd want a little less color on his face. I might go back in when I'm painting and make it a little brighter. But for this, I simply concentrated the light in the circle here and I primed it from this direction. So you guys can see that the zenithal priming really helps give you an idea of where your lights and shadows can be. As you practice more, you want to remember to really push your shadows and highlights. I know we sound like broken records, but this is the number one thing we tell painters that want to get better. I'd like to show everyone a trick um, about pushing your shadows and your highlights and uh, give you all a sense of scale. Uh, this is a little exercise that we did in college that was really great for showing you your darkest value to your lightest value. So all you need is um, just a regular drawing pencil. You can usually use just that and a piece of paper. And I'm going to show you the difference between um, making the darkest 10 to the zero here and the trick is to make an even gradient. So you can see I start off by pushing my pencil. Oh well as I was saying we're going to start with a darker box and we're going to slowly let up the pressure of the pencil. Now you can see mine isn't very even. You can see my marks, but you guys get the idea that I'm creating a value scale. Let's see if I can get it all the way to zero and make this look good. So, you guys have the general idea. This is a really great tool to keep next to your paint desk to remind you 
that you should be going from 10 to 0 with your shadows and highlights. A lot of times people stop here and this is the issue when you push your highlights even more and again we sound like broken records it really gives your painting that extra just that extra step um, that's the problem I had was I was going to here I would have my darkest color but I was only going to here and so you really want to try and push yourself all the way to that zero or that really small amount of your lightest color I know you guys like to see miniature painting in action, so now I'd like to demonstrate adding shadows and highlights in color on this practice bust. You can see that I have used zenithal priving to give me an idea of where my highlights and shadows are going. This is a guide and it will be covered up when I start painting in color, and I've had a bit of practice so I always know where my colors are going to go. But I want to point out um, on a face, most of the time when you have just a general lighting, you're um, highlights are going to go here on the forehead. I usually like to concentrate my highlights here on the nose, under here to catch the eyes, on the top of the lip, and on the chin. This is usually where I place them, and I usually have uh, shadows under here and here, and on his cheeks, and a really heavy shadow under his neck. All right, let's get started. All right, guys, now I'm going to use some colors for my skin tones and I'll show you guys the colors. Um, I've got some secret weapon colors. This one is Rushed Shadow. And I've got Brown Rust. I kind of wanted to go with an earthy tone for my skin. I've got Orange Rust. You can kind of see that we've got a theme going. We've got chestnut gold. It's a little thick, we'll have to thin that one. I'm going to try old mud. This one's interesting. This has a cooler tone to it. So we're going to see what this does. And I've got my color that'll be more of my highlight color. It's a golden skin. And then this will be my bright highlight. That's my creamy ivory. So I know we covered skin tones a little bit in the last video, but I wanted to show you guys that there's a no um, set um, paint combination for skin tones, just kind of what you think look, would look good. And um, generally, just play around and have some fun. You can see I've got some greens as my shadows along with this darker color that I'm going to mix in to maybe a little bit of this and this together to make my base skin tone. The green will be my shadows, uh, like I said, and then these we'll play around with and um, make those more of my highlights. All right, let's get started. We've covered layers in the last video, so that's the technique I mostly use. Um, I'm going to start with my base coat, so my darker color. I'm going to mix colors together and do that nice even base coat. Now for the video, we're going to work a little quicker so I can show you guys the idea just to quickly put in your shadows and highlights with color. All right, now for the base coat. Ooh, that's a nice kind of baby poop brown right there. All right, and I'll let that dry and come back and put another layer on. All right, now that I've got my base layers in, um, I'm going to start um, adding my shadows and then I'll put in my highlights. I wanted to let you guys know that I uh, have painted so many shadows and highlights that uh, I kind of always know where they're going to be or I can picture it in my head. Um, so after you practice, you'll get better and you'll know where your shadows and highlights need to be. But uh, take a picture 
of what you've done with your zenithal priming and even though you paint over it, you can always go back and look at the picture and see where your shadows and your highlights need to be. All right, now gonna try some shadows. Yeah, turn them upside down. I'm basically trying to get anywhere I know would have shadow. Mm, green does not taste good. Starting with my lighter colors. His beard's in the way, but I'm still going to put a little color there. The beard would be more sparse from just under his chin. And again, I know that my palette's a little out of focus, but you guys can see that I go back um, when I feel like I want to add a little bit more shadow. I'll go back in and add colors and shadows to the model. I'm actually going to switch to my smaller brush and let it dry a little bit. I switched to my smaller brush so I could concentrate more on the smaller areas and control the paint a little better.
All right, so you can see that I've added a little bit of that magenta. This is a really, this is one of my favorite colors to use in skin tones, um, as we uh, covered in the last video. So I've added a little bit of this to add to my skin tones when I'm painting because I want it to be um, a little bit brighter. I want our flesh tones to feel a little bit more um, fleshy or Caucasian because Caucasians usually have a little bit more red in their skin tones. So I'll show you guys, I'm going to add a little bit of that into my colors. especially around his nose. And you have a lot more um, blood vessels in your nose. So hence, sometimes people have more red on their noses and around their cheeks because the blood vessels are, I don't know if it's more, but I guess they're closer to the surface. A little too much pink. All right, you guys can kind of start to see where I'm putting in my highlights. This model has a really nice, um, uh, nice lines in the skin to kind of show the, the weathered skin. So um, you can see what I've been doing is I've been concentrating my highlights, uh, you know, using those lines as kind of guides to where I want them to be, but I am usually concentrating my highlights on the tip of the nose. Um, I like to put my highlights here. I like to have one really bright, thin highlight here under uh, where the eye will be, um, and here along the cheekbones. So you can see I'm really starting to concentrate that. And you can see how much of a difference um, adding in that magenta kind of gives to the skin. It makes the skin a little bit more realistic. And I switch back to my bigger brush because I want to blend these two lines. I want that line to not be as sharp in the skin. I kind of want to blend this together too. The forehead's a really big area, so it usually has a pretty decent highlight. There'll be a little bit of shadow here. You have a deeper shadow here. There's usually a little shadow here. And again, I'll keep going back and putting in shadows, putting in light layers of shadows. And you guys can really start to see those highlights.
There's usually a little shadow here at the temple. Not too much. I usually, like I said at the beginning, I like to concentrate more of my darker shadow under the neck and a little bit under the eye. That might even be too dark. Depends on the tone you want to set with your miniature. And if you want him to be kind of hulking and uh, brooding. Or if you want to be able to see his eyes a little bit. You'll add a little bit of a lighter color underneath. And I just tip the model upside down. Get some color under there. And you can see I'm putting some concentrated color into some of my shadows. So it really, like with the magenta, it really makes your skin tones more interesting when you put some different colors in. And this is kind of holds true for any large expanse of color you're using. Um, if you put some colors in there, uh, it really breaks it up and lets the eye travel around the whole canvas, but makes it more interesting altogether with different colors. Again, it's about all about bringing up those highlights. Just layers to bring up the highlights. All right, now that I've worked up to my golden skin color, I'm going to start adding in more of my um, white to get my brightest highlights. But you guys can kind of get the idea that I'm working up these areas here. Even though he's very, he's rough, and still bringing in skin colors. Um, I might go in um, and spend a couple more hours fleshing this out, but for the most part, 
I've got my um, mid-tones pretty much in. And got a little bit of white there. And now you can see I'm working in smaller areas to put my highlights in. I don't have it out on my table, but I might even incorporate a little bit of very um, uh, light blonde uh, color or a very light yellow color. Um, I know there's a, I think it's golden blonde in the Reaper line that I like to use as a skin highlight. But for this, I'm using just an off-white that creamy ivory and I'll go back over with just a light wash of my skin tone to even everything out do just a very bright white on his nose here and just certain little spots on his face I'll call him done. And now you can see from the Zenithal priming to the colored miniature how far we've come and that it really still holds true between the two. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. Um, and thanks again for joining us for Shadows and Highlights.